in and out of prison. If there was trouble, he was usually the guy behind it. And struggling with life. I have no hope at all, and I really felt like taking my life. See how this convict became friends with his former enemy, Officer Wendell. If you're at odds with someone and you let that fester, you, you could be missing out on one of the best opportunities of your life. We pray for one another. Um, that's my brother. Plus, children as young as nine are being killed. Euthanasia becomes the default way to die. And the government is letting it happen. All that and more on today's 700 Club Interactive. Hi, and welcome to the show. So many things change in the world of entertainment. Do you know what Grammy-winning recording artist is now a fashion designer? Or what Kelly Clarkson's latest project is? Here's our favorite entertainment reporter, Ephraim Graham, with the answers to those questions and much more in this week's Top 5 from Studio 5. At number 5, the return to glory. Tiger Woods is back, winning the Masters Golf Tournament in Augusta Sunday his first victory in a major tournament in 11 years. Just a little over an hour ago, the outdoor presentation, Patrick Reed putting the green jacket on the shoulders of Tiger Woods for the fifth time. His win comes after a long series of personal issues, injuries, back surgeries, knee surgeries, and questions of if he'd ever even play again. 22 years ago, you walked off 18 green, you gave your dad that iconic hug. 22 years later, you walk off and you hug your children. At number four, Lecrae and the male artist on his Reach Records label are answering a big call on their Unashamed tour. I think we're 15 cities in. Every single city, someone asks us, when are we going to sign a female artist? My question is, when are you guys going to sign on a female? I, I totally agree. We have officially signed a female artist. Her name is Wanda. You've been around Reach for a while. A lot of people don't know that, you know, and just being in the background and, and doing a lot of stuff uh, on the executive side. How does it feel now, like, to be on, a, on the artist side? Um, I think it's cool. I feel like um, being on the administrative uh, aspect helped me see a lot of things clear that I wouldn't have been able to see if I had only you just dived into my creative side. So I feel like it's really cool because it was almost like a blessing yeah. that I was able to be prepared for now. At number three. It's hard to say when there's no food to eat. Grammy winning recording artist Tamala Mann is now a fashion designer, launching the Tamala Mann Collection, a line of athletic and leisure apparel for plus size women. Tamala says she created the line for women to have clothing they can work out in and seamlessly transition to a stylish look for running errands afterwards. How would you say you, you mastered the, the, the secrets? Was it trial and error? What happened? I would say trial and error. I mean, just like, it's just like a job. You know, mm -hmm. you have to work at it. The Tamala Man collection is available online right now and in stores near you this fall. Number two. And Adeline has got her timing just right. Just in time for Earth Day, a behind the scenes look at the Disney Nature Film's newest documentary, Penguins. What's going on here? Okay, here we go. Actor, singer, and comedian. Antarctica. <laughs> Sorry. I had to I had to give you one. Ed Helms is the voice of this warm-hearted look at the cold life of Adeli penguins in Antarctica playing in American theaters right now. Meet Steve. Meet Steve. Meet Steve. Hi, I'm Steve. Steve, meet Adeline. I can't fight this feeling any longer. At number one. There's a child for every dog and a dog for every child. That's the voice of a busy Kelly Clarkson in her new animated film, Ugly Dolls. I had enough experience that he had me mentor his team on the second season. She's also a judge on this season of NBC's The Voice. Seth Meyers. Yes. Um, no, um, who is your worst guest? 
so I don't ever invite them. <laughs> and gearing up for her own daytime project. She have a talk show coming and I, I read do. that you were terrified. Well, I was terrified before he shot the pilot. Okay. I just really felt like a lot of people had um, an immense amount of um, faith in me, and I was very nervous about that. With those nerves now settled, The Kelly Clarkson Show comes to daytime television this fall. I'm really excited about the show now. Thank you, Ephraim. Well, Ephraim was all over the map in his top five this yeah. week. And, of course, we started out with Tiger Woods and his first victory in a major tournament in 11 years. Hadn't won the Masters in about 14 Guy's 43 years old, and he wow. was done, as you may recall, yeah. about 10 years ago when all his infidelity came out, mm -hmm. and over the years, drug use, yeah. uh, some painkiller addiction, DUI. People enjoyed rooting against him. Mm. Um, he was counted out, and here he is winning the Masters. He's the second yeah. oldest to do so, and uh, what an incredible turnaround. He, he went down to about 1,000 in the golf rankings in the world, and here he is winning the Masters tournament. Wow. Amazing story. Yeah. I saw on my Instagram feed there were a lot of pastors posting just what an awesome representation of, like, what a comeback looks like. He was counted out. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty awesome. And Kelly Clarkson, she's so busy. I mean, a movie, a talk show, and The Voice. Do you watch The Voice? Occasionally. My kids yeah. love it. So okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's entertaining. Yeah. But I'm actually really excited for her talk show because I, I just like how she keeps it real <clears throat> and I just, I think it'll be very cool. talented. Yeah, for sure. And I want to check out the new Penguins documentary, yes. which maybe I'm a little old for, but <laughs> I will bring the kids, but I'm like, I'll watch any nature show, <laughs> yeah. movie, whatever. Yeah. I think it'll be cute. I think it's going to be actually oh, look how really, cute I mean, come on. Know? Yeah. They're adorable. Do you, are you like one of those people who go to the zoo specifically for penguins? I'll go to the zoo just to walk around all day and look at animals I love. That <laughs> That's looks like awesome. Great we'll see yeah. that. And well, Lecrae's in the news as well. Yeah, I, I love Lecrae and I love Andy Mineo. And it's really cool because I was just praying recently. I was like, God, and this is random, but I was like, God, I feel like there's a lot of male Christian rappers. Can we get a female? Yeah. And so when I saw this piece and that they just signed yeah, a female rapper, that, I was like, what? That is so cool. So I'm super excited. Like I, I like hip hop and, and stuff. So I'm just, I'm glad that there's a female. And obviously Lecrae loves to mentor. Young yeah. Kids, right? Yeah. So I'm excited for that. It's good. Okay. So for all the latest in entertainment news, check out Ephraim's weekly show, Studio 5. You can watch it on the CBN News channel or online at cbn.com slash Studio 5. Andrew. Thank you. Well, coming up, Ryan was a career criminal and Wendell was the cop who put him behind bars. But now... He's one of my best friends, so he was the best man at my wedding. One thing it's taught me is every life is redeemable. They're two very unlikely friends. We're going to share their remarkable story. Don't miss it. Stay with us. Well, for years, Ryan Forbes was on the wrong side of the law, and Wendell Metzler was the cop who kept putting him in jail. Today, that's all behind them, and the two are the best of friends, all because of the power of forgiveness. Looking back on his childhood, Ryan Forbes remembers his father's struggle with alcoholism, the emotional and physical abuse he endured at home, and the fear he felt that led him to a life of running. I recall kind of hiding a lot, um, whether it was just hiding behind some persona of humor that I made up or literally hiding uh, under furniture. Uh, run away from my house, I would be outside till all hours because um, I didn't feel safe and I didn't want to be at home. As a teenager, drugs, alcohol, and partying became his release. He eventually dropped out of high school. In 2001, on the night he would have graduated, he was arrested for driving under the influence at the age of 18. Soon after, he received his first felony charge for stealing a motorcycle. While out on bail, he was at an underage drinking party when a fight broke out and police were called to the scene. It was his first of many arrests by Officer Wendell Metzler. I saw him hiding behind a, a bush, and I ended up uh, running from him and getting into a fight with him and assaulting him. So I got a felony, aggravated assault on a police officer. If there was trouble, he was usually the guy behind it. In 2002, Ryan was arrested several times for disorderly conduct, fighting, and marijuana possession. Then in 2003, he served time for driving under the influence and leading police on a high-speed chase. Surrounded by chaos, he felt empty inside. One of the major things that I felt I was missing, missing out on, 
was um, love, but not just love as an abstract idea, but love in the sense of, you know, a loving father. Ryan remembered saying the salvation prayer and asking Jesus into his heart when he was a little boy. During his prison sentences, he would reconnect with God, but he'd return to his old ways. In that place where I didn't feel any value, uh, in a prison cell, God continued to faithfully reach out to me and love on me. And eventually something started to change inside and I realized that I was valuable and that I was worth something to him. When I was released, I found myself caught up with the old friends, um, people, places, and things. Uh, I didn't have a church family yet, and I wound up back on drugs. In 2004, he faced off with Officer Wendell again and rammed his police car during a high-speed chase. He was arrested and sentenced to a year in prison. After being released, he binged on cocaine and prescription pills for six months. I remember thinking, I have no hope at all for a better life. I have no hope of ever owning a home, ever having a family, ever having children, and I really felt like taking my life. Ryan was alone and crying when a familiar presence surrounded him. Where I felt the love of God uh, enter in and capture my heart, that I felt totally valued and loved and held, and that's when I knew, like, okay, God, you got me. I've tried so many ways to do it myself, but I'm gonna let you do it and uh, I surrendered to him. He called his probation officer, confessed about his drug use, and began a Christian transition program. Ryan stopped running and began to right his wrongs, starting with Officer Wendell. And he was willing to talk to me, and I just took responsibility for my actions and apologized. The power of forgiveness, it exists, and you know, if, if you're at odds with someone, and you let that fester, you could be missing out on one of the best opportunities of your life. Wendell began inviting Ryan over for dinner with his family, and today, the two have a special bond. My relationship with Wendell is awesome. Yeah, you know, he's one of my best friends. So he was the best man at my wedding. Uh, we hang out often. Uh, we encourage one another, we call one another, we pray for one another. Um, that's my brother. Ryan and Wendell share their story through speaking engagements and their book, Unchained. One thing it's taught me is every life is redeemable. We had kind of predicted that he, Ryan wouldn't be alive by age 23 because of the lifestyle that he was living. And to become the man that he is today, um, fixing the cycle in his family where he's a good father now, a uh, good husband, um, it's just remarkable. He's earned two bachelor degrees and works at the prison where he once served time. Ryan found the love he was searching for and gained more than he ever expected. The wonderful, wonderful life that God has blessed me with, that he has given me um, his grace and his mercy. I, yeah, I get emotional because he's a good, good father and his character is good and he loves his son and I'm happy that he does. Boy, we see that story of Ryan who, who said he was hopeless, he didn't feel love, and now by the end of that story, he says that his father, his heavenly father, loves him. What an amazing and wonderful turnaround. That's the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in the life of someone who surrenders, who just turns it over and says, Jesus, I can't handle my, my life on my own. I desperately need you. Here's one of the wonderful things about that story. The Holy Spirit never stopped pursuing Ryan, ever, whether he was on drugs or in trouble with the law, in hostile situations with police, police predicting the guy wouldn't live past 23. This was a man in desperate pain. And I don't know how you cope. I don't know how you hide from the problems you face. I don't know how you um, experience life in the midst of turmoil. But I know that Revelation 3.20 tells us, it's the words of Jesus, behold, here I am. And this is for you. I stand at the door and knock. Whoever hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. And that means fellowship with God. Amazing relationship with God because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And as we are in this week of Easter and we reflect upon the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross so we could not only have eternal life 
with God in heaven, but we can experience victory today over what has us in bondage. But the key is not only hearing, but opening that door to the love of Jesus. And if you're in that situation today where you've been hiding and you're in desperate pain and you do not feel that love, I encourage you now, this is the day God wanted you to hear his voice and open the door. And you do that through surrender. Let's pray now. Jesus, I hear this story. I hear this life change. A man hopeless and who felt unloved, but by surrender to you, Jesus, he found relationship with God and hope. Restored relationship with the Heavenly Father. And Jesus, I pray that now for my life. I surrender it to you. I hear your voice. This day, I open the door to you, Jesus. And I say, take my life. Not only save me for eternity, but give me hope today. And I pray the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me and direct my steps, Jesus. I'm trusting you with my soul. I'm trusting you with my circumstances. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And Father, I pray for those who prayed with me that your Holy Spirit will lead them, will guide them, and empower them with the hope found only in Jesus Christ. And it's in his name I pray. Amen. I encourage you, if you want further prayer, you can give us a call at any time. The number is 800-700-7000. And someone here at CBN would love to pray for you. Ashley. Well, still to come, it's a country full of Kevorkians, where doctors are killing people without the family's consent. How can someone like that be euthanized in a democratic Western country uh, without the family members even being aware that it was happening? and some of the people dying with dignity don't have a terminal disease. We'll take you to the country where it's happening and meet the people fighting back. Next, right after this. When Belgium legalized assisted suicide, critics warned it was headed down a dangerous path. Now the European nation has medical ethics replaced by a culture of death. Belgium has long been famous for food, like waffles and chocolate. But now it's becoming famous for something else. Belgium has one of the most liberal euthanasia laws in the world. You could end your life here by simply telling a doctor that you have unbearable physical or mental suffering. Terminally ill children of any age can receive a lethal injection if their parents agree with the child's wishes. Tom Mortier's mother was euthanized in 2012 because even though physically healthy, she was said to be incurably depressed. In mother. My mother, who was physically healthy because of her mental problems, received a lethal injection from an oncologist. It was done without his or his family's knowledge. He was only told by the hospital the day after his mother was killed. My mother had several mental problems. She had to cope with depression throughout her life. She was treated for years by a psychiatrist. And the contact between us was broken. A year later, she received a lethal injection. Mortier filed a complaint with the medical board and then with a prosecutor, but was turned away. With the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, Mortier appealed his case to the European Court of Human Rights, which has agreed to hear it. His legal counsel is Robert Clark. Like, how can a physically healthy woman who has struggled with depression, who's had good days and who's had bad days, how can someone like that be euthanized in a democratic Western country uh, without the family members even being aware that it was happening. Something that makes this case even more disturbing is that the doctor who euthanized the woman sits on the very government body that is supposed to oversee the euthanasia law. The doctor, Vims Distelmans, who some have compared to the late Dr. Jack Kevorkian, once led a euthanasia tour of Auschwitz under the theme, Death with Dignity. Distelmans is co-chairman of Belgium's Euthanasia Commission. We have a significant conflict of interest where someone is essentially acting as judge and executioner um, in his own cases. When Distelman's commission did nothing after a dementia patient was euthanized without asking to die, one doctor quit the panel, writing that he did not want to be part of a committee that deliberately violates the law. There are now more than 13,000 euthanasia cases that this commission has reviewed. And in those 13,000, I'm aware of now one 
which has been referred to the prosecutor. As ethical safeguards have fallen in Belgium, some say killing has become a part of medical care. We began to offer death as a medical solution even for non-terminal cases. It is a problem. I have heard about people who were offered euthanasia even though they were not even considering it. The types of conditions, the, the things that would qualify someone for euthanasia are being pushed further and further out. In the most recent reporting period, there were euthanasias carried out on children as young as 17, um, 11 and 9. The supply of euthanasia stirs the demand. What you see is that uh, for an increasing amount of people, euthanasia becomes the default way to die. When we find someone who's requesting to die, who's standing on the proverbial edge of a bridge, and instead of trying to talk them down, the, the state is pushing them off. Clark says Belgium is now the ultimate cautionary tale for any nation that wants to legalize euthanasia. And I think we have to ask ourselves, is that the kind of society that we want to live in? Or do we want to live in a society with laws that say that vulnerable life should be protected and that all life, no matter what stage and no matter the health of the person, has dignity and value? Dale Hurd, CBN News, Brussels. Well, I definitely think that that completely fuels godlessness yeah. and it totally takes the dignity and beauty out of trusting your life and death in God's hands. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hopeless. The culture of death we're seeing also yeah. in the United States with some of the new views on when it's okay to murder children even after they're born. Yeah. And, you know, it makes you think of Isaiah 5 when he said, you know, evil will be considered good and mm -hmm. good evil and darkness preferred to light. And we're seeing that not only in this country, but of course to the extremes here overseas. Yeah, definitely. We definitely need to pray for the country of Belgium and, yeah. yeah. We are going to switch gears now. Uh, Cheryl used to dread going to school. Now she's class captain. So what changed? Cheryl says it's because she got a lesson in self-confidence that came from watching a cartoon. At an age when most kids love playing with their friends, Cheryl was always by herself. The friends stood out the When other kids bullied me, it hurt my feelings. Don't give me the friends. No one played with me, so I stayed away from everyone. The constant bullying made her lonely and sad. She didn't talk to her parents about it, but she did ask for something to be done at school. I told my teacher to separate my desk from the others, so I could sit by myself in the classroom. Cheryl found some escape watching cartoons. One day while surfing channels, she came across CBN Superbook. When I first watched Superbook, I saw the story of Daniel. He was not afraid to be in the lion's den. He trusted God, and God protected him. My favorite story is the story of David and Goliath. David was not afraid of anything, and he defeated the giant Goliath. Every week, she learned something new about God. Soon, she noticed some changes in her attitude. I am not afraid to talk to my classmates or anyone anymore. I am even the class captain. Superbook changed how I feel about myself. When we went to visit Cheryl and her parents at home, she was thrilled to get some Superbook surprises. And your very own gizmo. And A brand new Superbook curriculum has been introduced in her church. She loves to participate every time the Superbook Club meets. Thousands of kids in India are going through the Superbook curriculum at youth centers like this one. And the show's being broadcast nationwide with a viewership in the millions. Superbook is changing children's lives. I would like to thank the makers of Superbook. I have learned to believe in God and trust Him and to have confidence in myself. Beautiful story. Superbook is so powerful to change the hearts of children. And when you join the Superbook Club, you'll receive three copies of the newest episode for your recurring gift of $25 on a credit or a debit card. And then every four weeks, you'll be one of the first to receive each new episode. And your account will be automatically debited $25. And you can join today and we'll send you three copies of our newest episode, Paul and Barnabas, and an Easter bonus, a specially made Superbook Easter double feature DVD. 
It's got two classic episodes that I have seen, The Last Supper and He is Risen. You can call 800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com. And Superbook Club members can also stream all episodes of Seasons 1, 2, and 3 for free. And that is phenomenal. Let me tell you, if you've got children, grandchildren, Superbook is just a great opportunity for them to learn about the love of Jesus in an exciting way. Also, Ashley, closed captions and Spanish oh. audio included on those That's Seasons awesome. 1, 2. That's awesome. Sweet story about Cheryl, wasn't it? Yeah, I love, I love that story. I just love how it, you know, just made her feel better about herself and know who she was in Christ, so. And I've had my children um, call me into the room and say, you know, did you know this about the Bible? We're watching yeah. Superbook. And it's also, we're finding, we're literally hearing from adults who are also saying that oh, Superbook yeah. is teaching them about the Bible, things yeah. they didn't realize. And, That's uh, happened to me too. Tremendous watching. <laughs> overseas ministry we can do as well, yeah. getting Superbook out yeah. there. Yeah, it's good. Well, we want to leave you today with Psalm 118, verse 8. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. What a great reminder Amen. for us today. We also want to remind you that if you ever need prayer for anything, we are here to pray for you. You just call 800-700-7000. Let us know what your need is. For some people, it's physical healing. For others, it's financial challenges you're dealing with. Some people just feeling anxiety and fear. We have people here at CBN who would love to receive your call and pray for you today. So I encourage you, call us 800-700-7000. We'll see you next time.